Good morning, third graders. Good morning. Welcome to the lesson five. Today we are going to see an important topic and more than one topic. Today I'm going to tell you one story about Mary Anning. Mary Anning and the relation with the fossils, dinosaurs, or creatures in limestone. The story of Mary Anning is very famous around the world. And uh, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to read a little bit about Mary Anning. It's not Annie, right? A Annie, the, the classmate, <laughs> is Mary Annie, right? So, this is the topic today of the lesson number five. We are going to finish soon. He's missing the lesson six. And we are going to be ready for the exam, okay? If you are missing to present your experiment, do your experiment and present it right it's not going to have all the points because you are late but you have the opportunity to present it do it if you are missing please the experiment of science let's go with the lesson this is a picture of mary Anning and about the fossils right in conclusion the story said that mary Anning, with her father uh, she became uh in one paleontologist remember paleontologist and archaeologists are different. Archaeologists is about cities and old civilizations. And paleontologists is about animals, fossils, bones, dinosaurs, whatever, creatures in limestone or under the soil. This is a picture about fossils in one stone, right? Uh, maybe it's a cave. It's, this picture is about Nat Geo so it's very uh scientific so we have pictures about fossils remember the fossilization uh, of animals mary Anning, fossil hunter this is the topic of today and always start the story with one question how did a young girl become one of the most important fossils finder in history it's not only any it's not only a a fossil hunter is one of the most important. So the limestone cliff in Lime Regis, England, were one of the best places in the world for finding fossils. Collecting fossils was a popular hobby in the late 17th and early 18th. Most people did not think they were collecting scientific relics too, through they uh, thought, thought they came to the area on vacation and they just want to bring home a little bit pre piece of their trip so more than collecting fossils or discoveries uh mary annie was very interesting in uh more than one popular hobby in the 17th and 18th uh it was very famous to look for bones and fossils. Mary Anning's father, right? Sorry. Mary Anning's father sold the fossils he found to make a bit of extra money. He often took his daughter, right? Daughters, talking about Mary, with him. So when he went to the beach over time, Mary learned a lot of about these little pieces of ancient history. When Mary's father died in 1810, the family became quite poor to make the money. Mary and her brother began to hunt in for first. So the story said that Mary and the father made like business, right? And sell, right? The bones los encontraban y los vendían como reliquias. The father and Mary in the beginning, right? And then when, when they, they start looking for bones, one day Mary brothers found a heap of creature that look a little like crocodile aha uh -huh. sometimes later mary found the rest of animal's body and this turned out to be an important discovery together mary and her brother had found the first complete skeleton of an each tyros each tyros tyrosaur each is not easy for me to pronounce i'm sorry it's tire sour, right? Only part of the animal had ever been found before. Mary, who was only 12 years, she was a child. 
she was a baby, uh, a, a child, right? Not baby, <laughs> child. And uh, she did store it. She found the skeleton with one each tile sour with the brother. Mary spent her entire life in Lyme Regis. Where is Lyme Regis? In England, right? Remember, it's the place. So she told, she sold many of the fossils she found. She donated other to the museums. And her most important find was a plesiosaur. The plesiosaur in 1821. Wow, oh my God, amazing, awesome. Mary Ennis was an important hunter and he discovered the Ichthosaurus and plesiosaurus. It was a species that no one had ever seen before. Oh my God. And it helped Mary gain, Mary Jane, Jane gain some respect, sorry, gain some respect in a field. So Mary uh, never went to school. Oh, she didn't study to become a paleontologist. Uh, she studied, but she didn't convert in a paleontologist. She did it and she had great deals of knowledge. She learned most of what she knew from her experiences hunting for fossils. No school learning is about practice. And the practice she did, she found important uh, investigations on fossils. And as you see in the picture, she found two important dinosaurs or two important critters, not dinosaurs, I don't know, critters of, I think dinosaurs that we can consider of the story and actually in United States or England uh, we can find these museums with the rest of these fossils um, and all of these relics. Classwork, right? Write your name on the line, circle the letter of the best answer to each question below. Question number one, Mary first became interested in fossils, option A as an adult, option B as a child, option C when she graduated from college, and option D when her brother found an Ichthosaurus fossil. Ta, 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 ta. You're going to choose your favorite and you're going to tell me what is the correct answer. Number two, Mary could tell what an ancient animal had looked like. Option A, only if she could find a living version. Um, no, I don't think so. Option B, by, or yes, what do you think? By asking other scientists? Mm, no, by examining its fossil remains? notes of the above look at the question mary could tell what an ancient animal had looked like Shh, only if she could find a living version or none of the above or by examining its fossils remain i think this is the answer okay the next page you're not going to do it see you in the meet i love you so much take care do your classwork on time if you are missing to present the classwork and the experiment do it please love you so much bye